Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the city of Freiburg and its citizens to the International Con Convention of Environmental Laureates. This conference is taking place for the sixth time in Freiburg and has already become a tradition. It is still a great honor to host this event. First of all, I would like to welcome our guests from around the world. Among the 100 laureates from over 40 nations are dedicated animal rights activists, civil rights activists, publicists, scientists, and entrepreneurs. And it is my privilege to extend to you all a very warm welcome to Freiburg. This diversity shows us that the International Convention of Environmental Laureates has a good reputation around the world as a place of conversation and encounter, exchange and networking. Within just a few years, this conference has developed into a leading platform for participants to share experiences and knowledge in the field of environmental and climate protection and global environmental policy. This is also reflected in the guest list. I would like to welcome, it's already uh, mentioned, Deputy Minister of Environment of Bangladesh, Abdullah Al-Islam Jacob. This is a great signal and gives us courage for the years to come. It is a great honor and pleasure to welcome the former President of the Federal Republic of Germany, Mr. Horst Köhler, today as both a guest and a speaker. His opinions carry a lot of weight and influence in international discussions. Already during his term as president, he stood up for a globalization with reliable rules and a genuine partnership with Africa, argued for new growth and prosperity models, and warned about the destructive consequences of resource consumption. This commitment continues to this day. Dear President Horst Köhler, it is my privilege to welcome you to Freiburg. <laughs> I also wish to welcome all the members of the board and of the Advisory Council of the European Environment Foundation. First of all, uh, the speaker before, Professor Eike Weber, who will be speaking to us this evening, and to Bernd Dahlmann. A warm welcome to Ernst Ulrich von Weizsäcker. He is the co-president of the Club of Rome a pioneer of environmental policy and one of the visionaries of the energy and resource transition. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let me briefly address the motto of uh, this year's environmental convention. The motto is environmental policy in a politically changing world. We are currently living in politically troubled times. Almost everywhere, right-wing parties are gaining strength. Populism is on the rise. A look towards the US shows that we have to be prepared for some unpredictably, no, no, unpredictably, nein. It's, it's, really, it's really a hard word. <laughs> I guess it's even a hard work for English-speaking persons. <laughs> Unpredictability, that's it. <laughs> Unpredictability, we have to be prepared for some unpredictability and new uncertainties. And this also applies to en environmental policy. Donald Trump just picked a climate change skeptic to lead the Environmental Protection Agency. He is a close ally to the coal and oil industries and has in recent years formed an alliance with some of the nation's leading energy producers to push back Obama's signature climate policy. Fortunately, however, there is also resistance. 
Since Election Day, the environmental organizations in the U.S. have seen an outpouring of support. The struggle for a sustainable and forward-looking policy seems to be a given to us. In many situations, however, this is by no means the case. Environmental activists and award winners are persecuted, persecuted in many countries around the world. I know that many of you stand alone in their home countries and have to fight for their goals against powerful governments or administrations. Your actions that are often carried out under the most difficult conditions deserve our utmost respect and gratitude. You are fighting for human rights, for better living conditions, against hunger and poverty, and against the destruction of ecosystems, and you often do this with very little money and under great threats to your own safety. This Congress is intended to give you courage and support you in your work, and in this context, this year's conference will launch a resolution with the title, Call to End Repression. Eike Weber will elaborate on this topic in a moment. Allow me to say a few words about Freiburg. At the beginning, I already mentioned how honored we are that the European Environment Foundation chose Freiburg at its location in 2012. For us, this is also a confirmation of our city policy, which has one common goal, that is sustainable development. In environmental and climate protection, in energy and transport policy, for landscape and nature conservation, but also for education and culture, for a sound financial economy of social life. We call this policy Green City. This is the guideline of our actions for a good future, for ecological responsibility and economic growth, and for quality of life. Climate protection is a global challenge, but we have to solve it at a local and communal level. Here, in the municipalities, sustainability can be concretely perceived. Here is, is a direct impact on the quality of life of the citizens. Here it is also measurable. Let me give you one example. In transport policy, sustainability means above all quality of life in our cities, meaning that you have to create alternatives to car traffic with all its negative side effects such as noise, stench and air pollution. The basic requirement for this is a coordinated urban development and transport policy. Freiburg has developed a concept of markets and centers. I'm referred to the city of short distances, meaning that the district centers are strengthened by local services and the connection to urban railway networks. Settlements on the Green Meadow are only approved under certain conditions. In addition, it is necessary to make the pedestrian traffic, bicycles and public transport more attractive. Our plan in Freiburg was to increase the share of bicycle traffic within the city to more than 30% by 2020. We have long exceeded this goal. A recently published study on traffic mobility shows that the bicycle is already the most important means of transport in Freiburg at 34%. Car travel only accounts for 21% of the trips made by Freiburg citizens. With the right urban and traffic planning and the willingness of the city's citizens to act in an environmentally friendly manner, many differences can be made in the future. We in Freiburg keep our climate protection goal intact and have even tightened it. In 2014, the City Council decided to halve CO2 emissions by 2030 and further reduce them to zero by 2050. A political consensus between parties and among citizens regarding the goals of a sustainable city policy, as experienced here in Freiburg, 
cannot always be presumed. Therefore, the example of Freiburg is not a universal solution. However, despite all differences, we have a common task. We need to cooperate in order to share our experiences and learn from each other. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you and the citizens I wish for you and the citizens of Freiburg to take great ideas and suggest, suggestions from this conference that may lead to new ideas for joint projects which will be practical for changing and achieving something in your countries. I wish you all three exciting days in Freiburg and many interesting encounters and I hope in the next three days the sun will shining a little. Today it is awful, it is so awful. Um, I had to welcome a Chinese delegation and they told them before this is the sunniest city in Germany. <laughs> and it was raining all the day, it was a shame. And um, I, I offered them a book uh, with pictures and I told them this is the pictures of Freiburg in summer, in spring, in autumn, in winter. And always the weather is fine. This is a fake news what we have here. <laughs> it's not true, it's raining. <laughs>